O'Connell and I'm going to tell you about wine tasting. In order to have wine tasting, you have to be educated in knowledge, experience, and using your senses. We're going to start off with six of my favorite wines. The whites, the most popular we have is a Chardonnay. And a Chardonnay are grown in different climates. It's a dry white wine. It goes well with fish, pasta, chicken, and pork. It's grown in cooler regions in Western Australia and warmer regions of California and parts of France. Secondly, we have a Pinot Grigio, and all three of my white wines are from California region. The Pinot Grigio is more of a mild wine. It's good with different kinds of cheeses. It's famous in Australia's warmer climates, and it seems to have a nutty, more mineral overtone to it. And it's also famous in California and Italian, Italy. And last I have a Riesling. And Rieslings were originated in Germany, and it, it's a very sweet, crisp, light wine. It's good with fruits and lighter fishes. Um, Germany, France, and Australia, and California are the four regions that are famous for the Riesling. And each one has a different taste. In France, it's more of a dry taste. Um, Germany is just a very light, sweet taste. And Australia is a good mix of both of them. And on this side here, we have my reds. We are going to go over Merlots. Merlots are best known from France, from Bordeaux, France. Um, also, Italy, New Zealand, Chile. South Africa and California are good Merlots. Um, right now I actually have a local winery, um, a Merlot from a local winery here. It tastes um, of hints of black cherry, honey, and a tobacco flavor. It's a more mild red and it's good with red meat, pasta, and hard cheeses. Next we have the Shiraz. The Shiraz is from Australia. Those seem to be my favorite um, an Australian Shiraz. It's dry and it's very good with a dark chocolate and some fruits. It has a spicy overtone and a little hints of pepper. And last we have a Cabernet Sauvignon and this is from Paso Roble, California. And a Cabernet is one of the driest of the red wines. That's good with a nice big hearty steak, um, big red meat. It's, they also make them in Australia, Bordeaux, France, and California. It has a blackberry and cedar flavor to it. Um, it's a very strong wine. That kind of tells about the six wines we're going to go over, but I'm just going to touch on some basics for the wine. As wines age, all of the flavors and the colors seem to change. A red wine, as they age, the tannins become a little bit softer. The earthy leather flavors will develop a little more. And the white wines, as they age, they lose um, some of the acid and they take more complex characters and uh, taste more of toast and honey. When you store wine, um, the temperatures need to be kept constant. The up and down temperatures is not good because it does break down some of the values in the wine. The reds, um, should be either laying flat or at an angle pointing down so that way a lot of um, the wine can touch the cork. Reds are served at a cool room temperature um, that way it will offer, offer a balanced flavor anywhere from 14 to 18 degrees Celsius. Um, a lot of people I know do like to serve them colder um, it's all up to taste, but for reds it's much better if it's actually room temperature. Your whites should be chilled between 8 and 11 Celsius. And you really don't want it any colder than that because then that tends to dull the flavor of the wine. They should be stored within 70 to 80 percent humidity. And like I said, they should be kept at an angle so the wine touches the cork and that way it keeps it from drying out. It they're kept in darkness, it'll prevent any light making damage and breaking down the wines. Good ventilation should happen through a good cork. Um, if you don't drink the whole bottle and you want to put another apparatus in, they sell, like I have here, just plastic 
cork like to put those in because you want it to breathe um, but you don't want it to have too much air in there because it'll bring on some of the odors through the cork. Okay, we're going to go just for a few tastes here. Whites and reds are served in two different glasses. The reason for that is you see the whites are in a smaller glass with a smaller closure. That way it keeps the flavors of the fruits in to where you can taste them. Reds are just the opposite. You want a big bottom glass, preferably with a large opening. And reds are always good if they get some air. So we'll pour that first just to let that air out. It tastes like a total different flavor when you air them out. First thing you want to do when you go to taste any kind of wine, you're going to use all your senses. You're going to look at the wine. You're going to take a good look, see what you could see in there. Um, it's very clear character. I can see some small bubbles forming. Um, after you look, you want to see if it's a thickness to the wine, if it's thin. You can see that really well with reds. They're called, um, what they call as legs. If you swirl it, you can see the wine running down the side of the glass. And the thicker the leg on the wine, the higher the alcohol content. Next thing you want to do is take a good sniff and smell. And this I do have the Riesling. My first smell smells of peaches. Um, you want to keep that cold. It is cold. Get your nose in there and take a nice deep sniff. Deep sniff. I smell peaches, a little bit of hint of apples. You can twirl it around. Move the wine and smell the aromas that are coming through. And next, when you go to taste it, you're just going to take a real small sip. It does taste a lot of peaches. Um, you get that first taste just to have it touch your tongue and get your initial evaluation of what the wine is like. And your next little sip, you want to just swish it around your mouth, have it touch all parts of your mouth so you get that flavor. It's very light and very crisp. I could see this on a summer day with a nice piece of fish or even chicken. Okay. When you go from whites to reds, you want to make sure you have water around. Clean out your palate because they are two different, completely different tastes. All the whites are usually a little bit lighter, crisper, fruitier wines. taste different from the time you pour it to the time you let it sit for a while. And you, if you taste it right out of the bottle and then take little sips along the way, you can see as the flavors do come out a little bit more when the air hits it. A lot of people do decant the red wines and what that means is you're just taking the wine and putting it into a bigger um, substance before you pour it into your glass in order to get more air to it. And again, we're going to take a good look at the wine, see what I see. It's a nice, dark, crisp color. Um, this, I'm tasting the Shiraz from Australia. This actually is my favorite. It has nice, skinny legs on it. It runs down real nice and clear. There's not much sediment in the wine. You will have sediment in wine, especially your red wine, as it ages over time. Taking a sniff. First thing I smell is almost leathery um, and like a currant and black cherry. And that could change over the time and as the wine sits. It's a very dry taste. It does taste of cherries and actually hints of chocolate in this one. And a good way of tasting a red wine is when you take a sip, you want to put your mouth in an O position and then just breathe some air in and you can really have all those flavors open up. Yeah, there's definitely some black cherry 